Hey everyone, I'm Jay Smith, and this is Bradley Kendall, and this is After Further Review. And tonight, we're going to be looking at Clemson's upcoming football schedule for 2017. So Bradley, after further review. Tigers title defense, hopefully. Yeah, we'll see if they can make it back. I know they've made it back to two championship games in a row now, yep. and I, I, you know, my, I was a big hater. I didn't think that they were going to get back this past year, but Deshaun I know. Yep. ended up proving mm -hmm. me wrong, thankfully. Um, but, but again, tonight we're going to look at the road that the Tigers are going to have to take if they want to get back to a third can, you know, to the title game for a third consecutive and year. And third would be quite the accomplishment, but we, yeah. as we've learned with Dabba the last couple of years, you've got to expect the unexpected. You never know what's going to happen, even with the new quarterback. And it's, Absolutely. You know, it's interesting to see what we're going to you know, go through this year because it's our first time defending a championship in you know, 35 years. So. And, you know, like um, we kind, of, we kind of highlighted last semester during some of our shows, you know, anybody can beat you week in, week out. You know, Absolutely. we obviously had a lot of scares last year with games like Auburn to open the season, Troy we didn't play very well, NC State we easily could have lost, mm -hmm. and I know we ended up dropping that game to Pitt on that last second field goal, but there were a lot of games uh, at, at you know, different points last season where we easily could have uh, faltered and, and slipped down in the rankings a good bit. And every week mattered. I mean, it didn't yeah. matter if we were playing Florida State or Troy. You know, it, it, Dabo was prepared to have the team ready to go week in and week out, and that's kind of the mentality he used. And honestly, I think that's going to be kind of helpful going into this year. You yeah. know, he can you know, tell the team this year about what happened last year kind of stuff like that you don't want to have those scares and and um, after their first trip to the championship I guess now two years ago they their um, mantra I think this past year was embrace the target mm -hmm. so and now that they've won it all you know now that they're on top of the mountain it'll be interesting to see kind of how Davo riles up the team for this coming year obviously has a whole lot of new talent coming in they're losing a lot of starters especially on offense so yeah. they're gonna have to kind of rework um, from the ground up but I mean I think I think Dabo's the man to, to do it. You know, I mean, he's obviously proven himself capable of it in the past. And literally from the ground up now with our new facility we have, you yeah. know, to welcome this upcoming year, it's going to be a special one. For and sure. I hope, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll be kind of close to what we had last year, but you never know. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first up on the dock, we have Kent State. The Tigers are going to play this one at home. This is on September 2nd. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the Golden Flashes. There's not much to go, uh, go into detail here. Uh, they were 3-9 and nine last year, 5th uh, in the MAC. Uh, really struggled. They had a lot of stiff competition uh, throughout the year, obviously, as a lower-tier team, you know, trying to play the big boys, mm -hmm. mainly just money makers. Um, you know, they did have a couple, couple good wins in the mixed air. They played Western Michigan fairly <clears throat> well uh, late in the season, did lose 37-21. But uh, they did sign a guy, Jonathan Moore, who's a 70 grade overall, which, honestly, for Kent State is pretty impressive. You know, being that the rest of their grade is 43, the rest of their class. So, yeah. um, you know, a good first game, I think, for Clemson, especially with the new quarterback situation, to, you know, work on some things maybe that they didn't address in the spring game going into the season. Ease into the year, basically, exactly. is what, yeah. this, what this game is. As we'll look into it later, we have two hard games directly after that. So this is kind of a game you need to, you know, work on where everyone's going to fit into the rotation going into the year. For, for sure. I mean, I don't see this game giving Clemson any trouble. I mean, you know, I obviously – you just never know, like you said, week in, week out, any yeah. team can beat you. But, you know, I mean, looking at their schedule and, and who they played last year, there wasn't any really big names. I mean, they did open against Penn State on the road. They played fairly well in that game. They only lost 33-13. to 13. Reasonable game. Uh, yeah. They did play at Alabama, but Alabama shut them down 48-zip. to zip. Uh, They did play Western Michigan. I think you touched on that game mm -hmm. a little bit ago. Um, but no other really recognizable teams on their schedule and they didn't play well against really any of them except for their three wins um, so not really a game I don't want to say it's a game that Clemson can overlook because obviously when you're coming into the first game of the season you're still ironing out the kinks mm -hmm. in your you know I mean you have to treat all opponents equally but you know not something not a game that Clemson should struggle we'll be one to know it's fairly easy yeah. to say that yeah we'll be in the winners column and you know unless Kent State decides to bring Julian Edwin back for a game I don't really see them struggling with this. So, nice little breeze. We'll ease our way into it. Next up, though, we have Auburn Tigers. Now, you know, this is good for us because we have this game at home. This is next weekend on September 9th. And, you know, this, this is, this is going to be the first real test for a new Clemson offense. And as we touched on, you know, last week talking about recruiting class, Auburn was definitely up there. You know, power, mm -hmm. high tier SEC team uh, that brought in a good recruiting class, Gus Melzon. You know, did what he did, and they brought in Jarrett Stidham from uh, from Baylor, yep. who is going to be able to solidify their quarterback situation. So, you're know, definitely going to be a test. Thankfully, this year it is at home, uh, so that'll be a plus for Clemson. But uh, yeah, I mean, a good first. If we can pick up the win there, that's a resume booster for sure. And it, it wasn't a gimme last year on on the road. You know, I mean, I, I think that that was our season opener was last year. Nineteen thirteen yep. was the score. Was a, a pretty um, shaky offensive performance, but we had a lot of that. 
to start the season, at least in my opinion, last year. Um, but, you know, never a gimme when you're playing an SEC team like Auburn and a game that Clemson's going to have to, you know, prepare for. I mean, obviously they're going to be worried about Kent State to open the season, but this really is going to be their, their first test, their first hurdle if they want to remain on that national stage. Oh, no doubt. I mean, for Auburn, too, that's what they're trying to, you know, achieve is getting back to the way they were back in 2010 with Cam Newton. Yep. And, you know, after the 8-5 and five kind of surprise year where everyone was like, oh, Auburn's actually relevant this year. That's kind of the, the stepping stone that Gus Malzahn wants. So they're going to be, you know, they'll have a, a target on us, definitely. That'll, that'll be, you know, that'll be where their Super Bowl would be Clemson. Well, you, I mean, like you just said, you know, speaking of a target, I mean, now that they've, now they national chance, they're going to get everyone's best shot. I mean, you know, now it's we want Clemson and we, you know, bring us, you know, instead of Bama, you know, for the time being, because for right now Clemson's on top of the college football mountain. And, you know, for a team like Auburn, or Louisville, or even Boston College or Virginia Tech, which we'll get into in a second. I mean, for those teams to have the opportunity to play Clemson and potentially upset them would be huge. Yep, you know, no it'd make headlines it. very early into the season. And Auburn was a run-heavy team last year. I think they were like third in FBS and all rush, rushing yep. purpose yards. So, I mean, thankfully we do return a lot of guys in the defensive line uh, to help, you know, Venables will kind of situate that out. Mm -hmm. and uh, Hopefully, you know, we'll have a strong line in like we did last year. But... Yeah, definitely a good test. I like the way they scheduled this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if Auburn's able to control, if they're able to run the ball, control the clock, and, and control the pace of the game, you could definitely see it coming down to a fourth quarter, final drive type situation at home. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. And, and it, it wouldn't surprise me that this game is an evening game, really. I it mean, probably will be. Yeah. yeah. Maybe even game day, depending possibly, on where Auburn's right. Possibly. Possibly. It'd be a good way to prepare us for this next game we have up on the schedule. We'll be yeah. at Louisville, which we all know, you know, the gauntlet that is Lamar Jackson and the difficulty he possesses. Yeah, yeah this one is uh, one that I'm nervous about. Obviously, the game the last year uh, at Clemson was one for the ages. I know we were both at that game, and it was just absolutely spectacular um, performance by both teams. It really it was just like, how, you know, one of these teams has to lose, even though both of them just played um, out of their mind. But, yeah, going to Louisville, um, you know, we've, we've handled it in the past. It's always Barely. been close. Barely. It's always been very close. And, you know, unless I'm underestimating – um, our new our offense, our new offensive recruits coming in. I, I I like Louisville in this matchup. At this point, I would say they're probably the favorite. You know, I mean, it, obviously it's to be decided who's going to be the quarterback, and we'll kind of touch on that later. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how Clemson prepares, especially in that Auburn game, if they're able to get over that hurdle. You know, maybe a confidence builder going into the Louisville game. But yeah, I mean, that's probably going to be a night game. You know, on the road, big time matchup on the weekend. Um, you just never know with Lamar Jackson. You know, yeah. it'd be interesting to see how he overcomes what he had to go through the end of the year this year. And I, I know that for you know a while, obviously Lamar was extremely hot. You know, and he was. I mean, they were still even when they beat us in September. Or I'm sorry, even when when um, Clemson beat them, I still made the argument that Louisville was really a better mm -hmm. team. And obviously he faltered um, in, in, at the end of the Mildly. season, and yeah. he had a really really bad uh, final stretch. But if if he's in good form, and and I mean, again, this is two. Two games into the, into the season, so he's already got those offseason kinks worked out, and you know everything's running well for them. That game at home, I guarantee you, it's going to be an evening game, if not game day. Papa John's will be rocking. Yeah, it's it's going to be loud and rowdy in Papa John's. And Louisville, game. I mean, they kind of remind me a little bit of Clemson. You know, not not to the level of achievement we achieved, last, you know, I guess two years ago making the championship game. Mm -hmm. but, you know, they return one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Have a lot of pieces around them they can use. You know, very athletic on the offensive and defensive side. Yep. Uh, they had the 29th ranked class, so brought in pretty good talent overall for Bobby Petrino. So it'll be interesting. You know, a lot will be decided in those first couple weeks. For sure, and and the game after. Uh, the trip to Louisville is, you know, one that I don't think you could overlook either with Boston College. They were 7-6 and six last year. They finished 6th in the ACC Atlantic. So nothing memorable about last season's performance. But they did record, um, you know, seven wins. They, they beat NC State. Big improvement um, from two years ago. Yeah, I'm just looking at their schedule. They played, they did play uh, us. They played Louisville and FSU. They lost all three of those games. Exactly, so they're, yeah. they're, they're marquee matchups they did not perform well in. But they did win a bowl game. But they did get their bowl win. Took care of Maryland in the quick lane bowl. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, end of the season on a positive note. Um, you know, it is, I believe the game is at home this year, I want to say. Yeah, because we did play yep. them on the road last year. So, yep. obviously, that'll be a plus for Clemson. Um, and we're going to kind of need a little bit of an easier game after, you know, the Auburn and Louisville matchups we have for the weeks before. And what's important to note, too, is is we don't have any back-to-back -back away games this That's season. We, we're going to have a home, then away, <coughs> then home, then away. I think that alternates all the way down to weeks 9 or 10 
um, where we have two home games in a row. But yeah, yeah in terms of away scheduling this year, the only one that you really look at and are concerned about right off the bat, in my view, would be Louisville and or South Carolina. And maybe even Virginia Tech, which we'll Possibly, get into yeah. next. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but Virginia Tech, a little surprising to see Jared Evans, their quarterback, leave. You know, I thought, yeah. I was thinking, oh, there's no doubt he's coming back with the you know, mo momentum he built this year, um, especially for Justin Puente in his, in his second year coming up. But, um, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how we handle these first four games. Um, it honestly reminds me a little bit of Oklahoma, how they were last year, where they had mm -hmm. two really hard games to begin the year and were one and two, and everyone kind of wrote them off. So you hope Clemson doesn't get in that situation, but it gets very possible. Yeah, but, I mean, assuming they can get past, um, you know, Auburn at home and they're, and they're playing well and then possibly get past Louisville on the road, you would think that BC would be manageable for them. You'd think that they would, you know, have their eye on the prize, so to speak. Um, you know, even though it's only on week four, but you're right, this game coming up against Virginia Tech on the road um, to end the month of September, I mean, the Hokies went 10-4 and four last season, mm -hmm. um, first in the ACC Coastal, and they won the Belk Bowl against Arkansas, so they had a, a good win. A major comeback. Yeah, good win yeah. against an SEC opponent, um, but you just never, I mean, I know that we, we talked a lot last semester about how the Coastal, every team who was leading the Coastal was trying to give it away at some point. Like, oh. no one really wanted to win the Coastal until the last week of the season. It was like the, uh, the Big Ten with Penn State and Ohio State and Michigan. Right, but, I mean, again, with Virginia Tech, you know they've been around forever, obviously, with, with Frank Beamer, but now with a new coach, I mean, I don't see Virginia Tech going anywhere, and I don't see them just laying over, especially on the road. I mean, you know their stadium will be rocking um, as much. Lane Stadium will be as jumping. Papa John's Stadium. Absolutely, and I'm looking – you know, I talked about Jared Evans, he's leaving. Uh, they have a guy, Brandon Motley, who is – actually, he was a redshirt senior, so I guess he'll be gone. I don't know what kind of recruits they brought in in terms of quarterbacks, but uh, you got to think Fuente. He was the guy that, you know, developed Paxton Lynch over in Memphis. you got to think he's going to be able to bring in a solid quarterback and be able to develop him. So. Yeah, and I mean, and, and you know, I'm looking at their um, games last year. I mean, they had impressive wins. They beat uh, UNC on the road. They spanked them 34-3. I think that was the monsoon game, it was, wasn't it? It was, yeah, it was when it was raining. Yeah. Uh, they beat Miami convincingly. Beat they Pitt, beat something Pitt we didn't know. on the road. Yeah. Um, and they were able to take down Notre Dame. Obviously, that was that, that yeah, win is a little bit diluted. We're taking shots at uh, Notre Dame every week now. <laughs> well, you know, when you have a four and eight season, yeah. it's hard not to. But and and even in the ACC championship game against Clemson, I mean, forty two thirty five. That's it's no joke. It, yeah, I mean, that was a game that lasted well into the fourth quarter. Yeah, and I mean, for the Coastal, you know, you know UNC is probably going to falter off a little bit, but Virginia Tech could right be right there in the thick of things going into the end of the year. So For sure. On the road, I mean, that's definitely not an easy game. That's a huge cross-division oh, matchup right early it, into yeah. the season. I mean, what the, that's the fifth week of the season. Um, so, I mean, that, that could go a long way in determining a lot for the yeah. ACC. And they'll be out for revenge. I mean, you already know that he's going to be playing that replay of the ACC championship game all for week. Sure. So, realistically, I mean, what, what are your kind of predictions so far throughout the season? I mean, what do you, what do you see as record-wise up until this point? <sighs> Through the Virginia Tech game, you know, I'd like to say that I think we could win all of these matchups, but at the same time, I don't really have anything to base that assumption off of because I just haven't seen our new offense perform. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I know that, you know, Kent State is, you got to respect all your opponents equally, right? I mean, yeah. But at the same time, I'm really not going to get a definitive feel for how our offense is going to do mm -hmm. until I see us play Auburn at home. Yeah. I, I think that will kind of be. Um, that will set the tone set for the, rest, the, tone rest, of the, for the rest of the year. And going to Louisville, probably in a night game, is going to be very hostile. And we'll have to see how those young guys handle that yeah. type of environment. I was hoping, honestly, personally, I was hoping this game would be a little later in the year. Yeah. Maybe even a bye week before this one. But, you know, this is something I kind of looked at initially when I saw the schedule. Is we, the bye weeks, usually before Florida State and usually before a pretty hard road game like Louisville. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like it's before the weight game. Yeah. Uh, no, not the weight game. The it's in between the Syracuse and Georgia Tech game, and mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's a lot to handle the first couple weeks of the year. I feel like our um, opening four or five weeks and our closing, like our the, the beginning and the end of our schedule, are much more difficult than the middle. No doubt about uh, it. When you look at like matchups with Auburn, Louisville, and Virginia Tech, two of those are on the road. And then you're closing the season with like FSU, South Carolina on the road. I mean, I know that we spanked them this past year, but I'm just telling you they're. First off, they're going to be out for revenge. The and second are. off, the game is at Carolina. Muschamp will have them coached up well. 
and you know a lot of the a lot of the guys that will be playing for us next year have never gone into to mm -hmm. you know Columbia and had to play a game. So it's the price you got to pay for being a champion, though. Yeah, gotta absolutely. You got a target yeah. on your back, and and I know the mantra this past year was embrace the target. Clemson did that very well and achieved success. Um, but you know, in terms of like where I see us falling with a record through the Virginia Tech game, it's kind of hard to predict. I know, I know what you mean. I feel like four and one <coughs> is realistic. Yeah. I but could, I could probably agree we could that. very easily be three and two, easily. Yeah, which easily. in this day and age of the playoff, two losses is kind of a yeah, kind of a head scratcher. That you don't would, really you don't really get by with two losses. No, no, you'd have to really be convincing with the rest of your schedule and the ACC championship to have a chance. And yeah, two things. One, I mean, it is easy, earlier in the year, so if you did lose one or two games, it's better to have it earlier in the year for sure. For sure. But and also another thing with the Louisville game, if you lose that one, they're in the same. You know, right. division, division. Well, so yeah. You lose that one and Louisville runs the table, it's over. Yeah. You're not going to make the ACC championship. Yeah. So. And it, a lot will be on the line. It dilutes there. the importance of the remaining ACC games, especially with Florida State. I mean, Florida, again, I know we're playing hypotheticals here, but let's just say we are able to take care of business in the ACC up until Florida State, yeah. and Florida State's able to do the same thing. They're You're gonna be good. The too. final ACC game for both teams is going to determine who goes to the ACC championship mm -hmm. game. I mean, you couldn't ask for bigger stakes. Oh, no doubt. So, yeah. obviously, there's something to play for. <laughs> I think it's good to say that we got our championship out of the way. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Wake Forest, though, is the seventh, uh, or I'm sorry, the sixth game of the season. That one is at home for us. Um, you know, not too much really to worry about for the demon about the Demon Deacons. They went seven and six last year. Had a surprise win against Temple in the bowl game. They did, but see, they dropped games against NC State, Army, BC. I will say, I mean. You know, besides the fact they did lose some crucial games in there, they were close. I mean, the Florida State was 17-6. You know, they did play Army well. Army was sending up, you know, actually a pretty decent team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was at the Clemson game when they when they played. Uh, we played them on the road, and you know, Wake hung around. You know, yeah. they're still a developing kind of like BC team, still trying to figure things out. But you know, they do return their quarterback for next year. Um, he's a junior this year and played pretty well. Um, so I kind of like the direction they're going in. Um, you know, big win to close out the season against Temple, but you know, probably. A, Favorable matchup for Clemson, I would say. Well, they um, started that, uh, this past season hot. They were 5-1 and one yeah. halfway through the season. They dropped two games, and they won another one, and then they dropped three to close out the season. So I really thought that they kind of not threw away their season, but there was a lot of potential there that, that really went unrecognized. Yeah. And, and they could have competed for an ACC divisional Hard to believe. title. Yeah. Five and one. I mean, yeah. I know that they I know were we playing. We brought up that question. They were playing teams like Delaware, Tulane, Indiana. I mean, they beat Tulane seven to three. But but the they, record is what it is. They still got yeah. you know to five wins in six weeks, which is which was impressive. Um, but then they dropped games on the road to FSU, and they contended in that game. It was only a seventeen to six win. So that's what I'm saying for yeah. the Seminoles. So mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, I mean. Wake Forest ended up not having a stellar year. They did get the win in the bowl game to get above five hundred. Yeah, but. Not a game that I'm worried about on the scale of, let's say, Louisville or Virginia especially Tech. Yeah. yeah, especially at home. And you talk about the middle part of the schedule, a little bit softer than the rest of it. So yeah. we were able to survive the first five weeks. Let's pray for that. I think this will be a nice little break for us, you know, to work on things to go to the close out of the year. Well, that, that kind of leads us into the next game, the next matchup um, against Syracuse on the road Friday, October 13th. So we got a Friday the 13th matchup. This coming fall, and the Carrier Dome has given a lot of teams trouble in the past. Do you think that the Orange have a chance at upsetting Clemson? Um, I think did they knock off someone last year? Let me go back and look at their schedule. I believe they took down. They lost to Louisville. They did beat Virginia Tech, thirty-one to seventeen. That Virginia was the Tech big was win. ranked seventeenth yeah. at the time, mm -hmm. but Clemson beat them fifty-four to nothing. And they had that year. basketball score in the year against Pittsburgh, seventy-six sixty-one. Yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, but, you know, I think going back a couple years ago, I think it was like a thirty-seven twenty-seven game, or you know, we had Deshaun, and mm -hmm. well, I think we were undefeated number one in the country. So, um, you know, obviously not just going to brush by them and you know go into the Carrier Dome and get a win, no problem. It's gonna, they're going to make us work. Yeah. Um, they were a big rushing team, and honestly, one of the, one of the more disappointing uh, scenarios was they had so many quarterbacks go down. I think they eventually ended up playing like six quarterbacks throughout the year, which yeah. I just felt for them. A lot of injuries. Uh, but Eric injuries. Dungy, they do return him, and the coaching staff, um, you know, the school really likes the direction they're going in. So, you know, like Wake, I kind of like the direction I see them going in the future. Mm -hmm. um, on the road, it's really the only thing that I would, I would question. Yeah, yeah, like you like you pointed out, it's a building year for Syracuse. Yeah. It really is. I mean, that, they can't expect to contend for an ACC championship this year, I don't think, realistically. 
um, unless they put together an impressive run. But, you know, again, Carrier Dome, it's on the road, Friday game, which is a little bit unusual. It is weird. So, you know, yeah. I mean, there's, there's always that element to it, Friday the 13th for sure. Uh, but, but again, I, I don't think that this is a game that, um, you know. It's kind of like the weight game. Yeah, a yeah, a little because I mean we pointed out a minute ago in the show how our, our the middle portion of our schedule is a little bit softer it is, than the yeah. beginning or the end. Mm -hmm. So, so I, yeah. I think it's a game that's manageable. Very winnable, without a doubt. Um, you know, leading us into the bye week, which will be mm -hmm. nice. Uh, good way to prepare for Georgia Tech. We've learned yeah. that in the past. Yeah. You know, leading to that one, that Paul Johnson's still going to be there. Justin Thomas will be gone. The triple option. But they will still run the triple option. The triple it option. A system that will never die in no. Georgia Tech. Nope. It's, um, it's, it's worked for many years, <laughs> and it's given us fits yep. for many years. Uh, luckily, this game, like you, you know, pointed out, the off the bye week, we're going to have another uh, additional week to prepare for it. But, and I think that's huge. I mean, yeah. the only, re only reason I see Georgia Tech ever being a hard game is because they surprise you with this triple option out of nowhere. Well, it's really not a surprise if you know they're going to do it. Exactly. It's just stopping it. That's exactly. really what it comes down to with the triple option is can you, can you stop it? Can you contain it to a point where you know that they're going to burn through clock? Because mm -hmm. obviously running the ball is going to burn through clock. But as long as you can contain it and score when you get the ball, you're going to be able to handle Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and some of our most recent games against them, we've done a good job. We've done a very good job. Of containing the triple option. This game is at home. We have an additional week to prepare for it. I feel like at this point, if Venerables doesn't have a plan for the triple option, he's never going to have one. He's never going to have one. Um, I honestly, because of our performance these past few years, I feel really good about the Georgia Tech and game. And because of the play of our defensive line and our yeah. secondary last year, the way they were able to handle it, I mean, yeah. it was a highlight reel for us. Yeah, it was, so. absolutely. And he, they won't have Justin Thomas, so they'll have a brand new guy running the system. Yeah, obviously, it'll be middle of the year, so he'll probably figure oh, he out should be that, in, but. yeah, he should be in, uh, it's almost late season by this point. I mean, we're almost in November. Yeah, but so. I mean, they had a reasonably good year, nine and four, good year for Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. I mean, two years ago, I think they were in the Orange Bowl against Mississippi State, uh, closed out the year in the Tech Slayer Bowl, beating Kentucky 33-18, so, you know, pretty solid finish for them. Uh, but again, you know, like you said before, I think Clemson won't have too much trouble with them. I see it as, you know, another... A little three-game win streak there. Wake Forest, yeah. Syracuse, Georgia Tech. I, I could agree with that for sure. Uh, next up on the slate, we have a road trip to NC State uh, in, I guess, the battle for the Textile Bowl. And NC State went seven and six last year. You know, nothing too memorable about their season. They did get a win in their Camping World Independence Bowl against Vanderbilt. Very convincing. It was 41 to 17. It was a blowout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they do lose a lot. I know they're going to lose Matt Days, their running back, who was their, just their workhorse. Mm -hmm. and I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember their quarterback situation. I have to look it up, but I believe they're losing their starting quarterback, too. So it be a lot of turnover in Raleigh, for sure. Yeah. We're going to see where they, where they handle that. But, you know, earlier in the year, they were lurking. Started 4-1. and one. Gave us a game. Yeah. I mean, almost, you know, basically gave us a loss. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I think this year, now that it is on the road, I know we did struggle a couple years ago on the road against State, um, but kind of be I have to see them first before I really make a yeah, reasonable Yeah, I think that's, that's totally fair. And, you know, like you pointed out, obviously we should have, should have lost to them this past year um, with, the, with the whole kicker yeah. and the overtime. I mean, I really think that that loss to us deflated them because if they had been able to, to beat us on the road, uh, at the time, I think we were we were propelled them to first. We were third in the country, and then they had to face Louisville on the road the week after. Yeah. So an absolutely yeah. brutal couple of weeks, and then they also had Florida State two weeks that after that, big. and they ended up losing four in a row, yeah. dropping off the the map um, in terms of contending for a championship, yeah. and it kind of deflated the rest of their season. Mm -hmm. But you know, like you said. A lot of turnover in Raleigh, so it remains to be seen. Similar to Clemson, they have a lot of questions and not a lot of answers right now. Of course, yep, definitely. So I guess we'll move on to the next game after that. Um, I guess so, so far, you know, the last four weeks, what we've looked at fairly easy, uh, which you kind of need going mm -hmm. to Florida State, um, who's obviously going to be returning a lot of you know a lot of talent. Uh, not Dalvin Cook, he'll be gone. Always a powerhouse. Thankfully, Dalvin yeah. Cook will be gone. Always a powerhouse. Um, but you saw Jimbo Fisher, you know, top five recruiting class once again. Francois has a year under his belt, mm -hmm. you know, experience-wise. So he'll obviously be back. Um, and if he can get an offensive line, I think that's really the only thing that was holding them back was, you know, a way to protect Francois. Because uh, yeah. you know they're going to have a pretty solid defense, and they're going to have weapons on the outside. 
I mean, they got it done against Michigan in an amazing Orange Bowl this past Which year. I, fantastic. You know, and I, you know, I, I was um, a big Michigan guy uh, this past season. I really thought that they had a good shot to beat Florida State in the Orange Bowl. I think they were going to do it. Um, but it really ended up being a heck of a game. Obviously, Florida State is contending year in and year out for an ACC championship. When 10-3 and three is a bad year, yeah. you know you're a good team. And, and that was the thing is, is I think Florida State was 3-2. and two. They, they lost to UNC on that, that field goal. Yeah, 53 And right. they were 3-2, and two, and everybody started freaking out. They were like, oh, yeah. Florida State's finished. They're not going to do anything. There's no shot. And then the week after that, they beat Miami on the road by a point. And then nearly knocked off Clemson. And then nearly knocked yeah. off Clemson. Um, but they had, a, they had a scary win against Wake Forest. I mean, it was only a, um, it was a, it was a, a low scoring nine-point win. But the rest of the season took care of business and really stitched together pretty solid. A, a solid year. I mean, ten yeah. and three, your your double digit wins. Um, so really, not too much to complain about. But yeah, I, the only good thing I can say about this matchup is it's at home. Yeah. Because if that both plays a difference. if both teams are playing well and playing hot, you know, you'd like to think that this would be an evening game as well. And especially because Florida State does play Bama first week, and if yeah. they're able to take control of Bama. I mean, you could be looking at another 3-5 matchup we had a couple years well, ago. We, and we touched on that last week. Does Florida State have a legitimate yeah. shot? I mean, obviously, you know, every team has a chance to beat another team, but um, you know Bama's just going to come into that game hungry after oh, the course. loss this past year, and they're going to be prepared for that game. Uh, Florida State will have a lot on their plate to open the and season. depending on how we do against Louisville, this could mean a lot in terms a of the ACC. Exactly. LA. I mean, even if, we, even if we drop to Auburn and Florida State drops to Bama, if both of these teams are undefeated in the ACC coming into this game, it means the world. This is this is potentially your conference champion. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. So a huge, huge matchup um, at home, and you know, I mean, you'd like to think that Death Valley would make a difference, but as we saw in 2013, that's not always the case. But as we saw in 2015, it did. So this is very true. Hopefully, it's we keep that two streak. Going. That's right. So it's not just trading yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. When you have a streak of wins against Florida State. You know, you're doesn't, doing happen yeah. doesn't happen very often. Doesn't happen very often. Going into the last two games, you know, kind of an interesting way to end it. You got Citadel and then South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina don't doesn't like to hear those two schools back to back. And no, we yeah. we've got a home game against the Citadel. Uh, this is basically a prep game for the trip down to Columbia. It's basically like how Bama does it, where they play like Chattanooga. Or yeah, Auburn. I, I don't think this is going to really cause us much stress. Um, this will just be a nice senior day send off yep now citadel if i remember last year they were undefeated at like 11 and oh they're good they're and they're yeah. definitely good at the fcs level um you know i mean they went 10 and 2 and they won their first 10 games the only games that they lost last season were their UNC. last two at unc on the road and against wofford and wofford ended up making it to i want to say the quarterfinals of the fcs um so, Tournament, the, Respectable the championship. Program, so yeah, you, yeah. You, obviously, I mean, Citadel is um, well respected at their level, but not a team that I can imagine would come into Clemson and give Clemson a hard time. And a late in the year game. Yeah. Dabo is, knows what's at stake at that that time of the year, so you don't you really think there's any way that they would right. be able to you know, contend with right. us at that point. So not much to say for Citadel, but. Obviously, moving on to South Carolina, 56-7, to seven, still resonates in my head. I don't know yeah. about you. Oh, it um, resonates in their head. I can oh, promise you that. I mean, They'll it, be putting that up on the wall. You know, yep. they, they finished 6-7 uh, and seven last year. Uh, they couldn't get to 500 with that bowl loss to USF in the Birmingham Bowl. They lost that one 46-39. to 39. We, we knew it was a building year for them. We talked about it. We said, you know, this is not – we can't expect them to come in and, and – be back to where they were with Steve Springer. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a few years. Muschamp's going to have to get acclimated. They had a pretty rough stretch there, uh, though, midway through the season where they lost three straight, Kentucky, A&M, Georgia. Georgia. Yep. Um, but then they put together some wins. Excuse me, played well down the stretch. It beat Tennessee. Yep. Yeah, it, it was just a, that loss to Clemson, obviously, is going to linger in the back of their heads. I mean, it's, about it. it was a complete thrashing, um, especially on the road. So they're, they're going to be out for revenge. They're going to be fired up for this game. Um, I will say that when I watched the game, I, you know, I still remember this fourth quarter against Clemson when they brought in their third string quarterback. I don't remember what his name was. He was their third string and he was a dual threat quarterback. And he scored their only touchdown. I mean, yeah. He looked fantastic. Yeah. So, whoever he is, wherever their quarterback situation is going to be, I don't know. But all I know is the four guys from South Carolina that were ranked in the ESPN 300 all went to South Carolina. Yeah. So, Muschamp's obviously doing something good. 
you know, obviously, oh, he can only go out from here from six and seven. I, I think that they're easily going to be in the eight and four to nine and three range this year, and, and I think that they could easily get to ten wins with a with a bowl game. Yeah. Uh, this season, I don't think that's out of reach for them at Especially all. Especially the SEC, it's a little down. Yeah, we'll we'll see how the SEC looks uh, come late August, but you know, uh, South Carolina, they're. Uh, it's a rivalry game, so you kind of have to throw all that out the window. It doesn't yep. matter how both teams have been playing all year. It's it's really going to come down to who wants it more, and the game's on the road. And after that thrashing last year, oh, they're um, going to want it's Clemson yeah, big time. No, they are yep. for sure. They, they've already circled that one on the calendar, um, and they're they're prepping for that one. So that to me could be the biggest hurdle of the season, easily. Well, all right, that is twelve games right there. Um, you know. Bring it back an old segment we had from a while ago. We have the ref segment. That's and right. I come up with a few questions real quick, and you've got the flag. Oh, so you're gonna we're gonna flip the script right now? here. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little change real quick just to end the show. Okay. Something a little different. Um, I have three questions. You know, after we go on through the schedule, mm -hmm. um, let's see. We'll start out. Do you think looking at the schedule now, over or under ten wins for next season? Over or under ten wins. Gosh, so I you, really want to say over. You want to go eleven and one? I know you do. I think it's going to be under. You're going to go under? Yeah. Or maybe right at 10. Right at 10, yeah. Right at 10 is probably yeah. a good bet, yeah. yeah. I'd probably agree with you on that. I wouldn't throw the flag. You know, I yeah, you, say, you need this, not me. That's true. I want to say 11-1. and one. I, You know, I think it's all going to come down to the Louisville Florida State game. You know, if yeah. we take care – I'm just going to say we take care of Auburn. It's, it's a coin flip at that point. South Carolina. I, well, yeah, I think we'll uh, at least get best out You can't write them off. Lot Once of, again, this year, teams. Louisville Florida State is probably going to make or break our season. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, remains to be seen what we'll do with that. Uh, next year, I – I don't know if you've heard recently what they've been talking about. You know, the quarterback's coach has been talking about, you know, the new situation next year. We have a, you know, Sean's gone, so we need to find a new quarterback. Right. Um, he talked about a platoon system and how Auburn worked their three quarterbacks in last year. He talked about potentially doing that the first two weeks. Do you think there's any possible way that could work? Especially against Auburn and Louisville, which is two, you know. I think it could work for this reason. You open the season against a team like Kent State where you can try things out, right? Like you can experiment, you can change things around during the game, and you're probably not going to affect the outcome. Mm -hmm. You should be able to take care of business. Auburn, you, yes, you want to be prepared. You want to know what you're doing going into that game, but at the same time, it's at home, so you can experiment on a few different things and, and get acclimated. You're not going to have to get acclimated to the environment before you settle in, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Auburn's going to have to come in. It's going to take them a quarter to kind of get used to the crowd noise, playing, you know, signaling play calls and all that stuff. And there's a lot that goes into playing on the road. So I think that the fact that those two games, our two first games are at home, would give us more leeway okay. into experimenting with something like that. I'm going to throw the flag. I don't think there's any chance it can oh. work. I saw how it played out with a team like Ohio State a couple years ago where they mixed in Cardell mm -hmm. Jones and JT Barrett. And then with Auburn last year, they tried to mix in three quarterbacks. More than what impressed? Malzahn was just throwing in random quarterbacks. He didn't even know who he was throwing in. He was just like, all right, 13, you're yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. It just imploded. Um, you know, I, I can understand maybe for Kent State you do that, but for Auburn, we need a quarterback. And that's kind of going into well, my you next. Know, we have co offensive coordinators. We and do. That works. But we got not Jeff playing, Scott and Tony you know. Elliott. When you, when you change quarterbacks, I, I, it did work for Wisconsin a little bit last year, but mm -hmm. I just feel like it takes away from the flow of the game. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the offense for sure. around them, you know, it, the play calling changes, stuff like that. So I think yeah. you just need to find one and stick with one. And that kind of went into my next question. Who do you think our quarterback's going to be next year? Oh, gosh. Who are, do I have options? We got uh, Kelly Bryant, who I don't know if he's really capable of throwing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got Hunter Johnson, the freshman, mm -hmm. who's on campus early. Yep. You know, getting some reps in, uh, early on. Yep. And then uh, Zarek Cooper is another name being thrown around. He'll be a sophomore next year. Uh, don't know much about him in terms mm -hmm. of skill or anything like that, but I know he was a highly touted recruit coming in. So it's tough to look out. It is. I, I don't that. think that you could really give a concrete. I couldn't give a concrete answer until I watched the spring game. And I go and, I, and I'm going to, you know, watch and, and, and look at the different um, quarterbacks that they put in and run the, and the different schemes and all that. So I, you think Kelly Bryant you have tells seen me before. Kelly Bryant. I Honestly, just I just don't throw. see Hunter Johnson coming in and taking the job as a freshman. I just don't think that would be the best course of action unless he's just. He's the number one recruit. Blows your way so in. good. I know, but. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't think it's smart to overlook 
Kelly Bryant because when Deshaun came, Cole Stout was still the starter. He Remember? was. He was still the starter up until I think the Florida State game. And when and then Deshaun, Deshaun, came, in. Deshaun yeah. came in. So I think for right now, it's smart to give it to the seniority, to give it to Kelly Bryant. And if there are issues or you feel like things are not going how you want them to be going, um, then you might need to switch it around. Fair enough, fair enough. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, up until that point where Deshaun came in, Cole Stout didn't lose us a game. No, he, he played He won well. all of his starts, and he played He played very played well. well. He deserved the start against Florida State. You know, so, obviously didn't, didn't go too well for him, so yeah. Deshaun came in. But um, I kind of want to th- – you know, again, like you said, it's kind of hard to see right now because we haven't really seen anybody play it. Yeah. I kind of want to throw the flag because the way I want to see it, I want to see – Kind of like Texas ran last year, where they mm-hmm. had Shane, Bou- Shane Boucher, Bouchel, I think his name was, highly touted freshman recruit came in. He was the thrower, and then you got Kelly Bryant, or like their other guy, was the runner, like yeah. a short down guy. Yeah. So that's how I kind of want to see it play out, but I just don't know the maturity level. And if Johnson. and if let's say they put in, let's just say hypothetically they're playing Kent State, and Hunter Johnson is in quarterback, mm-hmm. you could put Kelly Bryant out there as a receiver, just 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 to play chess, just to play chess with Kent State, and just to give Auburn different looks to kind of confuse them on what you're really intending to do during mm-hmm. that game. Because again, with Kent State, I don't feel like I feel like you can play spring, chess. It's and, spring game, yeah, right, and, and you should yeah. be fine. So. I, you know, I, I would. My gut tells me Kelly Bryant, but I, I really just I don't know. We'll have to see in August. I'm excited to see the spring game coming up for sure. For I sure. These guys yeah. Play. No, it's yeah. it's going to be. Uh, and I think it's huge that Hunter Johnson's on campus early. Yes. That definitely because Dexter Lawrence did the same thing, and you for saw sure. that he became the first year. Yeah. So, I'd be it'll be interesting to see what happens. It's going to be a fun year. It's it's hard to believe it's going to be our third year of football here as students. Uh, we've been very fortunate. You know, we I mean obviously making to the championship two years now. And uh, just all the success that uh, the universities have with the football program, we'll uh, we'll we'll cross our fingers that we continue to stay, uh, you know, at or near yeah. the top of the college football mountain. Got a lot of expectations now. One question for you, and this is kind of going in the next year. Mm-hmm. Since Deshaun is now leaving, and I know we had his jersey, or some of us did last year. If you had to pick one person to have a jersey next year for, oh, who would it be? Got a lot of returning talent. I, I, I think the obvious pick is Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro I don't even think there's a question. Now, they may not sell his jersey number, but you know if they did, they would make a killing because, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think you he can. He was a key returning starter under ESPN. I mean, he's just he's the, he's the best walk-on receiver I think I've ever seen. I, I, I don't know how you couldn't. Like, I've never met someone that was like, yeah, Hunter Renfro, he's eh. I mean, he's just, he's just so he catches everything. Under the radar. He catches everything. Future Patriots wide receiver. God, he's so good. Yeah. So I, I, I don't have think a Dexter Lawrence football. jersey would fit you either. No, probably <laughs> not. Uh, but that's pretty much going to wrap it up for us. Again, all we were doing this week is previewing uh, next season's uh, schedule. And hopefully next week we're going to be back on Tuesdays at 8. No schedule conflicts. We'll cross our yep. fingers. And we're going to do a roundtable discussion on whether or not college athletes should receive any form of compensation it's not like we haven't heard enough of that. Or their pay. Yeah. I know. Yeah, that, that's probably but to we death. might have some different takes. So possibly so. Possibly yeah. so. It should be entertaining. But that's pretty much going to wrap it up for us this week. So for Bradley Kendall, I'm Jay Smith, and this has been After Further Review. Thank you for watching.